Our Father, we do thank you for your word. And we pray that you would be preparing our hearts. May we be like that fourth soil, that when we hear the word, it produces an abundance of godliness. We thank you for already speaking to us and ask that you would help me speak now, physically, truthfully, with clarity. Lord, if there's anything that I say that is contrary to your word, please rebuke me and protect this congregation. And as we explore your word together, May you help us to bring glory to Christ and to Christ alone. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, what's your deepest desire? As you woke up this morning, what was the first thing that you thought? Do you wish for more time with family? more resources to do the things that you enjoy. Perhaps your biggest wish is for world peace, that wars would cease. Or maybe a bit closer to home for rain. If you're anything like me, I don't often wake up thinking, gee, I'm looking forward to getting to know Jesus better today. I'm looking forward to speaking more about Jesus today, to boast in him. Which makes Paul's last few verses of Galatians a really challenging one for us. This longing to look to Christ, to know him more, to boast in him, it doesn't come naturally to us. In these verses, Paul wraps up his whole letter. And what we're going to do is have a look at these uh, verses from chapter 6, from 6 verse 6 onwards to the end, uh, and think about it in a sermon in three parts. Uh, first, we'll see Paul's basic exhortation to boast only in Christ. Uh, secondly, we'll ask the question, why boast in Christ? What, for what reasons? And finally, we'll see that boasting in Christ enables us to truly love one another. You ready? Good. Number one, make your your boast Christ. Uh, In these last few verses of Galatians, Paul Paul is hammering home his main point in writing to the Galatians, his, his whole letter. His main point is to constantly look to Christ. Or as he says in verse 14, our key verse, to boast in Christ. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is a personal exclamation from Paul. He says his own boast will be in in Christ, but it's also what he's been exhorting the church to do right throughout his letter. Don't be deceived by those who boast in anything else, he's said. In the Galatian context, it's those agitators who've come boasting in other things than the gospel. They'd made other things higher on their priority list, much higher than Christ. So, verse 12, it's those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not, obey, uh, do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. Firstly, they'd made circumcision much higher than the gospel of grace. But see in these verses what these people are seeking. They're pushing a religious agenda to circum- of circumcision so that they might, one, escape persecution, verse 12, presumably from the Jewish community. Two, they were pushing this agenda so that they might be thought of highly by others that they might boast in other people's flesh. 
in how many converts that they force circumcision onto. They're not seeking the gospel of Christ. And actually, they weren't even seeking God's approval by keeping his laws. Verse 13, they themselves do not obey the law. Well, Paul says, don't go with them. He himself boasts only in the cross of Christ and encourages the Galatians and us to do the same. Now, this needs to be said and constantly reminded for us because of the second half of verse 14, because of the implications of boasting in Christ. Uh, Read verse 14 again with me. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. What does it mean for the world to be crucified to Paul and Paul to the world? It's a weird turn of phrase. Well, to help us, perhaps we could use the word dead. The world is dead to Paul. And Paul is now dead to the world. He's saying that there is a lasting separation between the world and the Christian. Uh, We saw this last week, didn't we? If you belong to Christ, then you no longer belong to yourself. Even to the world. And so the worldly, fleshly things that we would normally do, that we would revel in, are no longer the things that identify us, that we seek after, that we do. The world is dead to us, crucified. But what about us being crucified to the world? Well, if you're a follower of Christ, one who belongs to Christ, one who even has been crucified with Christ, then the world around you will see you as dead, useless, irrelevant. For those who boast in Christ rather than the things that the world values, it's no wonder that the world wants to cut these people off from society. Whether it's to dismiss, imprison, persecute, kill. Simply because Christians boast about or value the gospel of Christ rather than boasting in a gospel that the world follows, valuing and seeking my comfort, my wealth, my sexual fulfilment, my choice. So don't be surprised when you boast about Christ and his gospel and it's met with hostility. This is the first thing that Paul reminds the Galatian churches and us, to make our boast, like he does, in the cross of Christ, the gospel of Christ, and this alone. And the implication is that we will no longer desire and seek what the world does. That old way is dead to us. And in turn, we will lose face with the world. They will cut us off, even crucify us just like our Saviour whom we boast in. Well, if boasting in Christ has such an effect on us, to lose face and be cut off, even persecuted by those around us, why on earth would we do such a thing? Well, this question is not left unanswered by Paul, and his answer forms the second point of today's sermon. Number two, we are to boast in Christ Because only Christ matters. Leading up to our passage today, if you remember last week, we've seen Paul create this contrast between the flesh and the spirit. The the way the world works is by the flesh. It's corrupt. It will not last. But Christ works by the spirit. Fruit that is eternal and, and matters deeply. Well, we see this contrast in verse 8 of our passage today as well. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. And have a look down in verse 15 as well. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. 
It's here that we see the spiritual effects of the gospel of Christ. Through Christ's death and resurrection, God is making a new creation out of us. We've seen this all along in Galatians. God pulls us into his family, adopts us as his very own, gives us a new name, his own name. He puts his spirit in us. He enables us to live godly lives. It's what God does to and for us through Jesus in making us a new creation that counts. Not whether we follow the law or not. It's not circumcision that counts. Nor baptism. Nor anything we do in the flesh. These things do not save us. But God, making us his people, a new creation... Through Jesus' death and resurrection, this is what saves. This is what makes all the difference. So boast in this and boast in this alone. Loudly. Everything else is trivial in the face of Christ crucified for us. We come back to the question, why would we boast in Christ if it's going to cut us off from the world, from those around us? Well, we must recognise that it's only in Jesus. It's only Jesus that makes a difference in our relationship with Almighty God. Verse 16. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Don't worry about being separated from the world, Paul says, or even being crucified by the world by boasting in Christ. Instead, know that you have peace and mercy from God. You are included in his family, in the Israel of God. That's the spiritual Israel, not the ethnic one. To all whom God has promised blessing. Well, if boasting in Christ means that there's a disconnect between us and the world, we no longer follow the worldly way, the world cuts us off for it, does that mean that we no longer have any responsibility to the world around us, to the world out there? Or even worse, does it mean that we can simply treat the world around us how they treat us? Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Well, I hope you realise in this passage and everywhere else in the Bible, mind you, that the gospel of Christ does not leave us with this conclusion. This is the third point that we see today. Number three, boasting in the gospel of Jesus enables us and even motivates us to love others. Have a look in verse 9. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those of the family of faith. Those who boast in Christ do so because the spiritual realm matters. But we don't become monks who try to escape the flesh. No. We don't just leave the world to its own devices. We don't use our flesh to do what is evil. To divide, bring down. No. We are to constantly be engaged in doing what is right. For the good of all, first our Christian brother and sister, but also without neglecting those who are not yet Christians. And this is only possible because Christ has made you a new creation. If we still belonged to the world, well, we saw what kind of behaviour characterised that identity, don't we? We saw it last week. The works of the flesh are self-focused, evil and destructive. Even here in our passage, it's reiterated. Verse 7, don't be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you will sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. 
But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. Without belonging to Christ and boasting in Christ, all we do is care about the flesh, the world, the material here and now. And we're told that this only reaps corruption. But if we are saved by Christ and belong to Christ, his spirit is given to us. He gives us a different outlook on life. We no longer care about fleshy things, but spiritual things, godly things. And these things are what matters. But we need to be reminded to persevere in this. Because it is all too easy to forget Christ To be overcome once again by the cares of the world. Listen to verse 9 again. So let us not grow weary in doing good, uh, in doing what is right. For we will reap at harvest time when Jesus returns. Let the reader understand. If we do not give up, persevere till he comes back. What might it look like for us to boast in Christ? Well, it's helpful to ask the question, where does Christ fit in your priority list? We all have a list of priorities, of things that we seek, things that we talk about, things that we care about. Most of our priorities are really good things. Things like family, work, sports, Hobbies, big things like climate change and social justice. Well, where does Christ fit in the list of your priorities? Too often I find myself suffering from priority creep, from seeing Christ slip down that list. Sure, I'm still a Christian, still know God and want to live for Him, but... This here is really important. The cares of this fleshly world become bigger than seeking and trying to please Christ. Paul's encouragement is to boast in nothing except in Christ. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't have other responsibilities and priorities in life. But all of them, all of them, must flow out of a boast, a love, a seeking after Christ at the top of our list and nowhere else. It helps us look after our families, our workmates, those who are disenfranchised. It helps us look after our world. But we get it wrong when we focus on those things above Christ. The great Charles Spurgeon uses a great illustration to explain this boast as he talks of John Bunyan. Here's what he says. Read anything of John Bunyan and you'll see that it's almost like reading the Bible itself. He had read it till his very soul was saturated with scripture and though his writings are charmingly full of poetry, yet he cannot give us his Pilgrim's Progress, that sweetest of all prose poems, without continually making us feel and say, why, this man is a living Bible. Prick him anywhere. His blood is Biblin. The very essence of the Bible flows from his veins. He cannot speak without quoting a text, for his very soul is full of the word of God. Spurgeon Spurgeon says, I commend his example to you, beloved. How wonderful. Brothers and sisters, Paul's boast is in Christ. And he writes his whole letter to to the Galatian church so that they might also boast in Christ. And may this be our boast as well. That we would be people who, if you pricked us anywhere, we would bleed Christ and his gospel. And even though the world hate us for it, even though they crucify us, May we continue to persevere in doing good for all 
especially our brothers and sisters in Christ, not because these things earn our salvation. We've seen that. Only Jesus can do that. But because he has made us a new creation already, and because his grace is with us as we await his return. Verse 18, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen.